What's up, NBA fan? What's up, all sports fans? This your boy, JB, host of the Behind the Bench podcast network and channel. Just want to give a shout out to the rest of the crew. I'm talking about Shy Kevin and Jermaine, along with Kobe Bryant Film Room and Big Dog Sports TV. And for everyone who's tuning in, I hope that you support Behind the Bench, become a subscriber, and help make this show the best that it can be. Now, <laughs> you know, as a Los Angeles Laker fan or a fan of the Los Angeles Lakers, I stumbled across this article that was written back in September. Back in September, right before training camp uh, started or media day. Training camp starts on media day, what they call it. And I read this article, man, and and let me read it out loud. Just just put things in context. The 2023 2024 Lakers had the deepest roster. The article isn't claiming that don't just have the deepest roster. In the NBA, but in franchise history, now I want to share something. Now this was, and this is not to be negative, because this is, this is not really about speaking negatively about the organization. This is about what you're led to do. And make moves that you wouldn't be dreaming of making otherwise. And the next thing you know, you're so far deep into the rabbit hole that you're led to try to convince yourself that the moves that you make are greater than what they really are. When you pull back the layers, or as they say, read the fine print. Now, Prior to the beginning of the 21-22 season, we go through this cycle every year since this guy was brought to this franchise. They make a lot of off-season moves from July up until August. And when training camp starts for the new season, the prognosticators and the pundits say where well, the Lakers had the best <clears throat> offseason free agent acquisition trades or whatnot. They're the prohibited favor to advance to the finals and win a championship. This has been this has been the lingo really since the beginning. Because in year one, the prediction was that that guy was going to lead the young core Lakers to the Western Conference Finals. So it's always a lot of hype, a lot of hyperbole, and it never pans out. It never, I put it this way, it rarely works according to plan to where you may get one season out of all the, the flux, the changeover, the roster overhauls, the coaching changes, right? You may get that one year, but man, there's going to be a lot of disappointment on the front end and on the back end. Whatever it is that you supposedly cash in and win. See, there's a hefty price tag that's being paid for the Lakers taking this direction. Because as I've been saying, uh, since I've been, uh, you know, working on these videos and other members of the crew have been working on these videos discussing the Lakers' current state, that what you give up is ultimately what you wind up giving up before you give up altogether. And that's where... 
that's the precarious situation where this franchise finds itself. So prior to that 21-22 season, the Lakers traded for Russell Westbrook. They re-signed a lot of players who was on the roster the year that they participated in the bubble. They brought back Dwight Howard. They brought back Ray John Rondo. They brought back Avery Bradley. Avery Bradley was released by the Golden State Warriors one day before opening night. One day before opening night. They signed Carmelo Anthony. They signed DeAndre Jordan. They signed Wayne Ellington from the Detroit Pistons. They signed Kendrick Nunn. That's supposed to have been a big-time signing, similar to the Lakers signing Gabe Vincent uh, this past offseason. They signed ex-players of the franchise who were part of the championship team of 2009-2010. And then the season starts, and by the time the holidays hit, the holiday season starts, it goes from hype to panic, and then the pundits start requesting more trades and when you look at what this franchise has done trying to placate this guy so he can prove that he can lead your franchise to the championship because it's always contingent on what you can provide for him what moves can you make for him to prove that he can lead any franchise to the championship Wow. When you really think about it in, the, in those terms, when you really sit there and think about, right? The reality versus the virtual reality is stunning. And the contrast couldn't be more different, right? From what you expected to what you wind up having to do. So what I'm saying is, same thing happened last year, right? And here we go, it's the same thing. So let me reread the title of this article written by a Laker fan. The 23-24 Lakers have the deepest roster in franchise history. Now, mind you. This is a franchise prior to when all this started, won 10 NBA World Championships from 1980 to 2010. Not to mention, they had an awesome team during the mid-90s post-showtime. Eddie Jones, Nick Van Exel, Elton Campbell, you know, uh, 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 Anthony Peeler, George Lynch, Kobe, Shaq, Dura Fisher, then they brought in Robert Ory, Rick Fox, people like that. So the conclusion is the belief is that all that success that occurred in the past, Showtime proved to be the team of the 1980s, won five championships. In that decade, five. That this year's version of the Lakers has the deepest roster? Wow. What's wrong with that picture? Well, the reason why this is being stated and exaggerated is because of what was given up. See, when you go down this road and when a team has been blessed with everything, naturally, 
outside of one positional player or let's say a, st a star free agent. What I mean by star free agent, I'm not necessarily talking about a top five player or a top three player. I'm talking about someone who can help complete your team to truly help you take you to the next level. In this case, for this team, okay, so what's happening is for, for, for a fan to make this assertion, well, is discrediting those Laker teams who really did have depth, who really did win. But when you forego what was given to you naturally, and instead of investing in it, you mortgage it away, well, it leads to over-exaggerations like this. The whole problem is the whole the root cause of this type of extreme and over exaggerated reaction is the fact that even when a fan don't realize it, is that even during the year of so called success. They have not been able to replace the core cornerstone drafted players from 2014 to 2018. That's the problem. And they were led to believe that this is why they made that comment. Of having, a, having the deepest roster in franchise history. But what's ironic is. He's applying that conclusion to the wrong team. That represents the Los Angeles Lakers. Because naturally. Potentially. If they would continue building up the real young core, then that assertion would be more plausible. Because the Lakers drafted 14 deep. See, you see where I'm getting at? Everything is returning back to full circle, but they're trying to apply conclusions. To a team that's constructed out of desperation versus what they had naturally. That's the difference. So when you had Julius Randle, when you had Brandon Ingram, when you had Jordan Clarkson, when you had Larry Nance Jr. who's playing lights out since his return from injury for the New Orleans Pelicans, he is helping turn that team around defensively especially on defense, interior defense and rebound. When you have an Ibiza Zubac, when you have a Josh Hart, I believe I mentioned Kyle Kuzma. When you have a Thomas Bryant, when you have a Mo Wagner, who's contributing to the success of the Orlando Magic this year, who's for a young team has started off very impressively. When you have even, and I, I have not even mentioned him yet, Zavi Mikhailik was drafted the same year that Mo Wagner was drafted to this team uh, during the uh, uh, 2018 uh, uh, NBA draft. Okay. Zavi McCulloch out of the University of Kansas was the number one three-point shooter in the nation. Let me put it this way. He was shooting over 40% from three. The year he was drafted out of the University of Kansas. 
So now you're drafting so you're drafting so astutely that you're bringing players to your team with specialty, right? To where you're filling whatever improvements that you need to make to the team moving forward, you're doing so naturally by drafting them. See, we forgot all about Zabi McKayla. See, instead of trading Avika Zubats, midway during the 28-2019 season to bring in uh, Mike Muscala, who was gone by season's end, you drafted your three-point shooter naturally to where you didn't have to trade Avika Zubats and mortgage him off to bring in a shooter who was gone. See, this is what happens when you don't realize what you have. So now you fast forward about four or five years, and then you, this is why you have a fan reach this conclusion. Now, I bet four months later, I bet you the same person has a totally different view on the players who the Lakers brought to this team during this offseason. I guarantee it because the production is not justifying that reaching that type of conclusion beforehand. But if you look at their performance on their previous teams that wanted a, or saw best to move on from them to improve their own uh, roster, then we should have saw this disappointment coming a mile away. And that's the whole point. See, what that is telling me right there, when I read that the title of that article is, like I said, whether that fan realizes it or not, that it gets back to the root core problem. The original young core of the Lakers What was they saying about the real young core the year before they brought that guy to the team? They said <laughs> the real young core of the Lakers presented the deepest roster of young players in the NBA. It was no exaggeration. It was true. So now what the Lakers have been led to do is try to mimic and replicate what they had naturally through more ill-advised means to where whoever was available as a free agent this past offseason, that's who they targeted. Because they was available through free agency. But you really haven't had the time to scout them the way you do when you scout your own players when you draft them. You see what I'm saying? So that just lets me know if they are stuck to the script, they would have been saying that about the real young core as they march forward. Represent this franchise in 2019 and 2020 and 2021. I'm going to tell you another reason why they're saying this too. <laughs> because of this guy's need to try to win another championship by any means necessary and exploit the franchise on all levels. is leading fans to believe that signing eight or nine guys as free agents to fill out the roster gives the impression that they had a successful offseason. But when you had your real team out there, you were so deep that you would have been so you would have been more equipped to succeed long term that you wouldn't have to fill eight or nine roster spots every year to begin with to lead you to think 
that you had the most successful offseason. And it, it, see, it's not based on the actual talent of the player. It's based on the fact that it's like a it's like a a Jedi trick on the mind. It's like, man, we said we signed eighty nine guys, so they must be good. But in reality, if you got to sign that many players to uh, fill your roster, odds are that at least half of them will not meet your expectations anyway. You see, so what I'm trying to say is when you are led to shortcut the process, the process will come back to shortcut you out of the equation. Or as they say, if you're true to the game, then the game will be true to you. And all we got to do is look at the standings to prove that. See, it's deep and it's real, man. It is real what's going on with this franchise and what's going on with this team. Now, shot crew member of the Behind the Bench Network, he did a great video, part two of uh, what I had the opportunity to present uh, the, other, the other day. And look, when the stars line up, for you to draft at that level, you cannot forego that. That's like a once, it's almost like a once in a in a lifetime opportunity. When it comes to professional basketball, when you're starting all over again, think about it. Think about it. Think, let's go back to the, and I'm gonna I'm gonna close this. Let's go back to the Detroit Pistons of the 80s, right? The cornerstone player was Isaiah Thomas, who they drafted in 1980, I think, I believe with the number two pick, the 81 draft, if I'm not mistaken. And as they attempted to build a championship team around Isaiah Thomas, it, it took them eight years, but hey, eight years is not a long time when you look back at it, you know, in the grand scheme of things. Well, by the time he won a first championship in franchise history with Isaiah Thomas as the team's best player and leader, they built the team that eventually went 9 and 10 deep. The team that the, the Lakers drafted from 2014-2018, where they really took it to the next level in the 2017 draft and the 2018 draft. They would have went beyond 10 deep. And I'm not even talking about the players from the Lakers G League affiliate squad, such as Alex Caruso. You see, and now that you went down this road, you're trying to win by any means necessary. Win now, you're almost have depleted your G League talent. See, this is getting real, man. This is getting real. So what's happening is. Every year that you overhauling your roster, you you you, you know you you're changing over almost sixty percent. Let's say I'm close to two thirds. Because think about it, the only two players that remain on that team that competed in that bubble are LeBron James and Anthony Davis. The only two players remaining from that team. Is LeBron James and Anthony Davis. It's so mind boggling. It feels like science fiction. But it ain't. That's what's crazy about it. It's as real as it gets in sports. But if we would have stuck to the script. From 1 to 14, this assertion would have been true four or five years before the fact. 
This is how you know that the Lakers never should have mortgaged away the best and the true deepest young core in the league and potentially in the history of this story franchise. So I just want to drop that. And again, I mean, it's, it's, it's just, you know, it's getting to the point now where When, let me put it this way, when pundits have discussions about the Lakers, read between the lines of what they're saying. Without them saying it, they are revealing what the true problem is going on with the team. It's not the head coach. You can't blame Anthony Davis because he's been relatively healthy since returning from that foot injury. Uh, the beginning of last year in 2023, right? You got an Austin Reeves who come off the bench and on any given night, he can get you 2022 20, for that game. He's averaging like what 15 plus, right? Okay. So you can't blame the front office because they, they, they're they doing everything beyond what they're supposed to be doing times 10 to, to try to prove that this guy can lead them to the promised land. When you read between the lines, the answer to the puzzle is stirring all basketball fans right in the face. That the Lakers are trying to replicate what they gave up. But they can't fill the void. You could not... Understate the importance of drafting your own players. <sighs> that's the fundamental, that's always the primary and the initial means of team building. Draft, trade when appropriate, free agency in that order. When you try to reverse that order, you're going to lose every time. Guaranteed. Think about it. What team historically has ever won a championship by saying we're going to sign predominantly, we're gonna we're going to feature 75 to 80 percent of our roster of newly signed free agents. With at tops one drafted player and a guy who you mortgaged the future way to trade for four years ago to win. Is there an example of a team that's ever won attempting to build in that matter? The history says no. So I just want to shut that down. Another nugget. And until next time, this is JB. Or a BTB behind the bitch.